Um, let me just share with you guys a, a few scriptures on Thanksgiving as a kind of devotional for Thanksgiving as we're approaching this holiday. I'm, I'm, I enjoy the fact that every year we have this rhythm within our country where Thanksgiving is set aside, where we're able to spend time with family, where, where we are able to count our blessings, where we are able to, uh, many of us, uh, not have to work and be able to just just reflect and enjoy uh, what God, reflect upon and enjoy what God has given us. Um, every year I identify a few things that I'm thankful for and I ask my family members or friends to do the same and we talk about that. And and every year it seems like the the, the, the one thing that I'm most thankful for, if I were to just sum, sum it up, one, one word is family. Uh, the, the family that, that God has put us in a spiritual family, having God as our father and having one another as brothers and sisters, uh, and of course our, our blood related family as well. But, but what, a, what a gift it is to have the relationships that we have and, and enjoy those and, and experience love and comfort and encouragement from one another and be able to give that to one another. God has designed us for this. And so I'm thankful for you. Um, the Bible calls us over and over to be people of thanks, people of praise, people of gratitude. It warns against complaining and murmuring. You see, in the scriptures, complaining and murmuring is destructive. It's, it's demotivating. It, it, um, it discourages others. It displeases God. And, and while complaining may give us some momentary relief or release, uh, it, it's actually toxic to our souls and toxic to others. And so, so the Bible calls us to give thanks in all things, for all things, and for all people. Thanksgiving is God's will for us, and he's commanded it. It's not optional for us. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do you want to know one of the aspects of God's will for you? It's to be a thankful people, to be a joyful people, to be a thankful people, to be a prayerful people. And, and here he, he says, in all circumstances, in all things, even a 2020 kind of year where we've walked through a global pandemic, where we've walked through social distancing, where we've walked through social turmoil, where we, we've walked through political turmoil, sickness, we've walked through uh, 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 storms that have brought devastation, fires that have brought devastation. We've walked through so much difficult thing so many difficult things this year and there's a lot that we could complain about that wouldn't do any good uh, but 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 we're called to give thanks in all things in all circumstances we're called to give thanks for all people as first timothy 2 uh, 1 says first of all i urge that supplications and prayers and intercessions and thanksgiving be made for all people okay thanksgivings for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good and it is pleasing in the sight of God. May we be a people who are thankful in every situation, for everything, and for all people. Uh, may we pray for our leaders and thank God for our leaders, the ones that we like and the ones that we don't like and we don't agree with. Let us commit to thanking God for them, praying for them, so that things would go well for us and for our country. God's pleased when we respond in this way. Now, let me tell you something that's needed if we're going to do this, to give thanks in all circumstances for everything. Um, uh, as uh, Ephesians 5.20 puts it, we need perspective. We need perspective on God's grace. Okay, the amazing grace that he's given us, the spiritual blessings that he has showered down upon us that Ephesians 1, 3 to, through 10 uh, speak about. Uh, go ahead and read that this week and reflect on the many spiritual blessings that you have in Christ. Acceptance, redemption, righteousness. Okay, you have this new position and identity in Christ. 
that you and I can thank God for regardless of what we're going through, regardless of how difficult the spiritual battle is. We can stand in this place and fight from this place and give thanks to God from this place of being in God's grace, experiencing God's goodness. We need to see God's goodness in his grace if we're going to have our lives characterized by gratitude and thanksgiving. We also need a, a perspective on God's sovereignty over all things. If we're going to thank God for all things and in all circumstances, we need to have this perspective that Ephesians 1, 11 has uh, that says, In him we've obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. We need to have the perspective that God works all things together for the good of those who love him. We need perspective of his goodness and perspective of his sovereignty if we're going to give thanks always in all circumstances. May God give us that perspective. Amen. Uh, and lastly, we need uh, Thanksgiving is results from experiencing and knowing God's grace. Okay, uh, 2 Corinthians 4.15 says, For it is for all it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. Now notice the effects here. Notice the ripple effects, the, the domino effects of what happens here. Uh, God's grace extends to more and more people, okay? That's the gospel going forth, the gospel of grace going forth, changing lives, transforming lives, okay? And the grace of God and the love of God coming out of lives, the, the gospel being proclaimed and shared and people living it out and lives being impacted, those who are the salt of the earth and the light of the world, making an impact in the world, by God's grace working through them. And so what it causes is thanksgiving. When we experience the grace of God, when we're able to really see it and know it and, and experience the grace of God, it causes thanksgiving to, to swell up, to well up within our hearts and come out of our mouths. And God is honored by this. God gets glory. This is all for the glory of God. And so this Thanksgiving, I want to encourage you to, to just reflect on how good God has been to you. Reflect on the many blessings that you have in Christ Jesus, his grace, the riches of his grace that he has showered down upon you. And, and know that he's sovereign over all things. Get, get, get renewed in that perspective that God's good and God's sovereign. He's great and he's gracious. And give him thanks, regardless of what you're going through. Thanksgiving helps us get our mind in the right place, okay? It helps us not to be anxious. It helps us not to focus on all the negative things that we can focus on that will rob our joy and our peace. Philippians 4, 6 says, and 7, it says, Be anxious about nothing but all things with, with prayer and supplication, uh, letting your request be made known to God with thanksgiving, okay? And, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And so instead of complaining, instead of worrying and fretting or criticizing and, 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 and letting that, that toxic uh, complaint and criticism come out, let your request be made known to God and thank him. Thank him for all that he's done. Thank him for who he is. Thank him for what he has given you. Thank him for what he has promised you. Thank him that he's working all things together for your good. And may this uh, Thanksgiving time be one that's marked by joy, one that's marked by gratitude, one that's marked by intimacy with God as you approach him with thanksgiving. Amen.